Okay, good afternoon, students. So yesterday, that is in previous class, we were discussing regarding p-block elements, and we discussed a few questions. So again, we we'll continue with the remaining questions. And in this session, I took some questions based on first PUC also, that is group thirteen and group fourteen. Okay, so mixed questions are there. One by one, we can discuss. So here you can see the next question. What is the hybridized state of phosphorus in PCL5? All of you know that PCL5 means phosphorus pentachloride. So he is asking regarding the hybridization. So how to identify that means phosphorus atomic number is 15. Its configuration is 3s2, 3p3. Means it contains three unpaired electrons in the p orbital. Therefore, the hybridization. If we see the orbital picture, here it is like this. Three unpaired electrons are there. If three chlorine atoms are there, they will make the bond with this one and make the hybridization. Yes, p three hybridization. But still, two chlorine atoms are extra. And we know that phosphorus will show the oxidation state. Plus three also and plus five also. That is the main thing. That is due to that one we can identify. Take the p orbitals. P orbitals. If you take five orbitals are there. Remove this electron and add this yes. one. That time five chlorine atoms can make the bond here. One, two, three, four, five. And what is the hybridization of this one? Means yes, p three. And one d orbital. Therefore, the answer for this question is a sp three d hybridization. The oxy acid of phosphorus having the low oxidation state is again the same question yesterday we discussed in the oxy regarding oxidation state. You should know the formula of that. Find the charge which will be lowest. That will be the answer. Okay. Hypophosphorus acid H three PO two, orthophosphoric acid H three PO four, pyrophosphoric acid H four P two O seven, and metaphosphoric acid. The formula is H PO three. So based on these formulas, you can calculate the oxidation state. 3 plus x minus 4 is equal to 0. Its charge is plus 1. 3 plus x minus 8 is equal to 0. The charge is plus 5. 4 plus 2x minus 14 is equal to 0. The charge is plus 5. 1 plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. The charge is plus 5. Three options are having plus 5 charge. And only one will be having plus one. Therefore, the lowest oxidation state is in option A. Okay. Which pair of oxo acids of phosphorus contains pH bond? So again, you can go through the structures, draw the structures in which the P has directly attached to hydrogen. You can identify. Another one view is there. Where oxygen atoms are less, their pH bonds will be present. Based on that, also you can identify. For example, see here H3PO2, HPO3. Here oxygen atoms are less, and here also less. But here five, four, seven, three more oxygen atoms are there. Hence, our answer for this question is D. That is H3PO2 and HPO3. Where P is directly bonded to hydrogen. In the pyrophosphoric acid H4P2O7, the number of sigma and pi bonds are. Yesterday only in the previous class P4 Oden structure I have told how many sigma and how many pi they form. So here also we we'll draw the structure and identify sigma and pi bond. And the structure is like this. P O P Double bond O, double bond O, O H, O H, O H, and here O H. Like this, we are having a structure in which double bond is present. There will be a pi bond, 
and remaining will be a single bond. So here double bond is there pi, here double bond is there pi. Just see the option where two are there. Here is two, here is two, and here is two. Means three option contains two means again we have to count the sigma bond also. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve sigma bonds are there, hence the answer is sorry, D option that is twelve and two. It is zero, so answer twelve and two sigma and pi bond. Next question. The number of POP bonds in cyclic metaphosphoric acid is. All of you know that metaphosphoric acid formula is HPO3. Cyclic metaphosphoric acid means how many phosphoric atoms I have to take. If you take two, it will not form a cycle. You should start from three up to n number. So if I take the three, this one, I will multiply this by three times. I get the formula H3P3O9. This is a cyclic metaphosphoric acid. Draw the structure of this one. He asked POP bond. You can identify easily. First write 3 phosphorus. Okay. Next write double bond O, double bond O, double bond O. Now P3 work is over, O3 work is over. Still 6 oxygen and 3 hydrogen I require. Therefore, I will write OH, OH and OH for each phosphorus. Now, I left with only 3 oxygens. Therefore, it forms a POP, POP, POP. How many POP bonds are there means? 1, 2, 3. Therefore, our option for this question is answer C. That is 3 POP bonds are present. Next question is. Which of the following oxides of nitrogen is paramagnetic? Paramagnetic means unpaired electrons. Diamagnetic means paired electrons. If you draw all the structure of this compound, you can understand how many lone pair and how many unpaired electrons are there. When you compare all this, this forms a stable structure, this forms a coordinate bond, this forms a stable structure, but N2O is having a resonance hybrid with one lone pair of electrons. Hence the answer is A, which is paramagnetic. The N2 molecule is isoelectronic with. Okay, this question is related to chemical bonding. I will take it as A. Next, we move to another question. Which of the following is an anhydride of nitric acid? Okay, so already in the last class, before open anhydride, I have discussed it. To find the anhydride, take the compound and remove the water. Here, and they are asked about the nitric acid. The formula of nitric acid is HNO3. Okay. From this, I can't remove water because only one hydrogen atom is there. Therefore, I will take two moles of nitric acid and I will heat it and I will remove the water. What will be remaining? Let's see. 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen there, 1 oxygen you remove. So, remaining the compound will be 5 oxygens and 2 nitrogens. Therefore, we get the compound that is called as N2O5. And see the option where you are seeing A that is called as a N2O5 and hydride of nitric acid. Okay. Next question The reddish brown gas liberated. When nitric oxide is oxidized in air is. So first only the clue you know, reddish brown gas. If you know the color of the gas without doing any reaction directly, you can identify the answer. If you take you know and pass with the O2, you get the compound. What is that reaction? Let's see here. NO plus air, that is oxygen, we get NO2 gas. Make the equation balance 2 yellow and here it will become 2 yellow to gas. Therefore, N is oxidized from plus 2 to plus 4. Okay, and then yellow 2 is the reddish brown fumes which is obtained in the nitrate test. Next question Nitric acid oxidizes phosphorus 2. If you take a phosphorus that is white phosphorus P4 and react with HNO3 oxidizing agent, 
what will be the product he is asking. Let us see that P4 plus HMO3 will always give the compound that is called as orthophosphoric acid. Therefore, the answer is H3PO4 plus NO2. The element is 0, it is plus 5, it will get oxidized. Here it is plus 5, it is plus 2, it gets reduced. Okay, plus 4. Hence, here the answer for this question is H3PO4 orthophosphoric acid. Okay, next question. Phosphine can be prepared by the reaction of water with. So, phosphine preparation, all of you know, one is by white phosphorus, another one is by in one of this option. So, what is that? Let's see. If you take calcium phosphate, that compound, whether you get phosphine, no, because it con uh, contains a phosphate group which will convert into the lower phosphate group, no option. Calcium phosphide, the formula is Ca3P2, yesterday only I did the reaction Mg3P2 or Mg3N2 to get this one. If you take Mg3N2, you get the ammonia gas and ammonia and phosphine are from a both hydride family, therefore this option is correct. Ca3P2 plus H2O is equal to CaOH twice plus PS3 gas will be liberated. And third option, calcium dihydrogen phosphate. This also is the wrong option. And calcium phosphate, CaPuO twice, this is also wrong. Hence, the answer for this one is phosphide. From phosphides, we are preparing phosphate gas. Next reaction, same related to phosphine, P4 plus 3NaOH plus 3H2O gives phosphine plus sodium dihydrogen phosphate. Cl2 plus NaOH gives NaCl plus this one. The above reactions are examples of, he has given two equations. This is the first equation, this is the second equation. He is asking below the options which, which of the following reaction it is. Neutralization means acid and base mixing. Dehydration means removal of water. Decarboxylation means removal of carboxyl CO2. Disproportionate reaction means what? Now I will tell. Here we have not taken any acid. So first option is wrong. Here we are not removing any water. Second option is wrong. Third, there is no carboxyl group only. This option is wrong. The answer is a disproportionate reaction. But what do you mean by disproportionate reaction means whenever you take any element or a molecule, it should only undergo oxidation and reduction both. For example, in all the reactions, we will be writing like this oxidation reduction means this element is different, this element is different. But in disproportionate reaction, we will write the reaction like this. One means this only underwent oxidation this only underwent reduction. How it has been done here, let us see here. P4 white phosphorus charge is 0 and here the charge is minus 3 and here the charge is plus 5. Therefore, from 0 to P it underwent reduction. From this to this it underwent oxidation. It is a disproportionation reaction. Cl2 is 0. In NaCl charge is minus 1. In NaOCl the charge is plus 1. From 0 to minus 1 it underwent reduction. From 0 to plus 1 it underwent oxidation. This is also a disproportionate reaction. Okay. Next one. The gas liberated when the formic acid undergoes dehydration is. So in 16th group. When you are learning the chemical properties of sulfuric acid, we tell that <coughs> sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent, means it removes the water from the compound. So when you take the H2SO4 and react with the formic acid, which gas will be liberated, he is asking. 
कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड और सल्फर ट्राइऑक्साइड ओके लेट्स सी द फार्मूला ऑफ द फॉर्मिक एसिड इज एच सी ओ ओ एच to this if you add concentrated h2so4 water should be removed okay and when you remove the water that is h plus and oh minus ion you are left with the c double bond o which is called as a carbonyl group or carbon monoxide so i can write the reaction co plus h2o hence the answer for this one is co so when i am telling this one another two reactions also i will tell in that chemical property if you take sucrose c12h22o11 and react with the h2so4 there you are getting 12 carbon plus 11 water molecules dehydrating agent property and another one reaction is oxalic acid h2c2o4 if you react with h2so4 there you get co gas co2 gas plus h2o will be removed okay so follow this all things any one question if they ask you should understand formic acid only co sucrose only carbon and oxalic acid both carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide next question if you not see the question properly i will repeat two times when the plants and animals decay the organic nitrogen is converted into inorganic nitrogen the inorganic nitrogen is in the form of so you all know nitrogen decay or nitrogen fixation if you take the plants and animals decay they contain organic nitrogen and when it is converted into inorganic nitrogen the inorganic compound formed is he is asking four things ammonia elements of nitrogen nitrate and nitrates all of you know according to biology the nitrogen element is converted into ammonia which is having the four smell so answer is a and s3 next question the type of hybridization of boron in diborane is so what is asking the question diborane here in the question it is okay he is asking the hybridization of that so which hybridization it will coming means you know the structure of diborane it is b b h and h here which are sigma bonds and here one bridging bond or chocolate bond or banana bond we are telling it is called as b2 h6 diborane so here three elements two electron rule is following hence it forms a planar structure the hybridization present one this one is sp2 hybridization okay so next question we will move that is when orthoboric acid is heated the residue left is all of you know in group 13 boron family first few you see we learn different compound like borax boric acid so when you say state the s3po3 that is called as a boric acid and if you heat what will be the residue metaboric acid boric anhydride boron and borax so i will write all the formulas h b o 3 it is metaboric acid boric anhydride is boron trioxide b 2 o 3 boron means b borax means na b 4 o 7 dot 10 h Okay, let's see here in the four options. Easily you can remove two things because here water molecule is still it is present, therefore it can't be the residue. And here only element is there, it can't be the residue. The answer may be between these two. One is metaboric or boric anhydride. Take the compound S3PO3 and heat it. You get the compound that is called as HBO3. Okay. HBO2 that is a unstable compound. Okay, but HBO3 is a metaboric acid. But again, if you heat it more, that time two HBO2 is taken. You get water plus the last residue remaining will be B2O3. That is free from water. Hence, your answer for this question is boric anhydride. This temperature is low. This temperature is red hot. You have to heat it 
for long time. Next question. The most acidic of the following compounds is. So you should know acidic, basic, and neutral oxide. All the non-metals of P block elements are acidic in nature. All the metals are basic in nature. But he is asking four options. From this one, we should identify which one is most acidic. Boron trioxide, 13th group. Phosphorus trioxide, 15th group. Arsenic and antimony, again they are present in the 15th group. So when you write like this, B2O3 will come here. In 15th group, B2O3 will come here. Next one will be arsenic oxide. And last one will be Sp2O3 oxide. So we know that down the group, acidic character goes on decreasing because metallic character goes on increasing. And along the field, acidic character goes on increasing. Therefore, when you compare all this, this is also non-metal, this is also non-metal, most both should be the acidic. But these two are somewhat metalloid and metal. Therefore, our answer for this one is Boron trioxide is the most acidic compound the following. Okay. Next question. When carbon monoxide is passed over solid caustic soda and heated to. So you should know the formula of the caustic soda. Caustic soda formula is NaOH that is sodium hydroxide. Take your carbon monoxide and react with NaOH and you heat it. Some students will feel that the answer should be Na2CO3 plus H2O. No. When you take a carbon dioxide, it forms inorganic compound. But when you take a carbon monoxide, maximum it tries to form an organic compound. Sodium carbonate inorganic, sodium bicarbonate inorganic, these two are organic. The answer is between this and two. Yes, <coughs> three COONA, but carbon is only one here. Therefore, the correct answer is that COMN. So we get the component C double bond O N A. N A C O O H. No addition product or anything. And what is the name of this compound? Sodium formate. We are getting the sodium formate as the reaction. It is the chemical property of carbon monoxide. Okay. Next question. It is related to 14th group silicon. SiF4 gets hydrolyzed. So it is asked in some of the exams. SiF4 means what? Silicon tetrafluoride and silicon valency is 4. So what happens here? SiF4, when you react with the water, that time some ion should be displaced in the fluorine. So to make, make that due to the 4 valency, I am taking 4 moles of water. And when you react, this will break as H plus and OH minus. 4 H plus are there, 4 OH minus are there, and we form the compound SiOH4. It is silicon tetrahydroxide plus you get what you are getting that is H only. It is 2 moles of hydrogen gases liberated. No SiO2 because it will form when you react with H. This is a wrong compound, this is the correct answer and this is not possible. This one it is called as a silicon hydroxide, that is 4 valency. Next question, inorganic benzene is, all of you know that benzene organic compound whose formula is C6H6 and it is called as organic compound because it is having a carbon content. So in inorganic chemistry also, we are giving the name as a benzene, but why and which is called that name is C. In one of this option, the structure is mostly similar to the benzene structure only. Hence, it is called as inorganic benzene and the answer for this one is this one. Why it is called as benzene? Let's see here. 3 nitrogen, 3 boron, hydrogen are 6. Hydrogen and hydrogen are similar. Here one carbon atom six times, but here boron and nitrogen are three three times. So in place of benzene, what you will do? You will write six carbons and join the structure like this, and write the hydrogen six atoms and make the double bond here. 
Similarly, here also in this compound, we will make the head of H, 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 and H. All this one. But which atoms are there? Three boron atoms and three nitrogen atoms make the bond. Okay. But now the problem is that nitrogen is having the lone pair and boron is not satisfied by the octet. Therefore, nitrogen will donate one one electron to the each boron atom and it forms a double bond like structure. When you see the benzene carbon which contains ornic and here it is having the inorganic benzene. When you compare these both, you can tell answer that is inorganic benzene is called as B3 N3 6 Okay, next. Next question is the difference of water molecules in gypsum and plaster of Paris is you know that gypsum it is a compound of calcium, plaster of Paris is also a compound of a calcium. Both are having the same formula. Hence, what is the difference? Let's see. If you write the CaSO4 dot 2H2O calcium sulfate dihydrate, it is called as a gypsum. And when you go for POP, plaster of Paris, the formula is CaSO4 dot of H2O. So, what he is asking, what is the difference of water molecules? You can see here, two are there and half are there. So, what is the difference? It is 1, 1 by 2. That is 1.5 molecules of water is having the difference between gypsum and plaster of Paris. Okay. And when you again heat this compound, you get the red hot gypsum. That is very dry calcium sulfate. Next question. Mark the element which displaces three halogens from their compounds. All of you know in 17th group we are having four halogens. All four halogens can be used for various reaction, but now he is asking among the four halogens which cannot be displaced. For that, we will see some reaction Ki plus Br2, KBr plus I2, Kf plus Cl2, KCl plus L2. Just if you imagine like this reaction, what happens here? Br can displace I. This reaction is possible. Br I cannot displace Br. This is not possible. Cl cannot displace F, but F can displace. It. If you are not sure, I will make you clear. F Cl Br I four halogens down the group electronegativity goes on decreasing, and who is more electronegative? It can displace the bottom element. Means fluorine can displace chlorine, chlorine can displace bromine, chlorine can displace iodine, chlorine can displace bromine, chlorine can displace iodine, but chlorine can't displace chlorine, bromine can't displace chlorine, iodine cannot displace the chlorine. Bottom elements will not displace above element, but above elements can be displaced below elements. Therefore, the answer he is asking which displaces. Displaces means what? The answer is chlorine. It can displace all the elements. Next question. When the chlorine is passed over a dry slaked lime at room temperature, the main reaction product is. So, first you have to know the slaked lime formula. What is the formula of slaked lime? Its formula is CaOH twice, that is calcium hydroxide. When you take this calcium hydroxide and react with the chlorine, what will be the reaction? CaOH twice plus Cl2 is equal to. So, what you will first term? CaCl2 plus H2. So, you may go for this option, but not like that here. What happens here? Chlorine is the best oxidizing agent. When it react with the calcium hydroxide, we get a new product that is called as CaO. Cl2 plus H2 will be liberated. CaOCl2 means it is also called as a bleaching powder or it is called as a calcium oxychloride. Hence, the answer for this question is option C. CaOCl2. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच वन बिलो इज अडो हेलाइड अयोन सूडो हेलाइड मीन वॉट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट हेलाइड वी नो विच कंटेन्स अलोजन विथ अ नेगेटिव चार्ज बट सूडो मीन्स वॉट आई विल टेन द डेफिनेशन सूडो हेलाइड आर द अयोन्स विच डू नॉट कंटेन हेलोजन्स बट शो द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ हेलोजन्स Which whatever the halide ion show the property, they will show that. Okay. The condition for this one is they should contain the most electronegative elements in them. And the most electronegative elements are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. These are the elements. Whenever any two atoms are combined and they have a negative charge, they are called as a pseudo halide ions. He is asking about that. Cyanide, ICl. I F three, I F minus. If you see all these three options, they contain the halogen. This do not contain the halogen. C is an electronegative element. N is an electronegative element. This is called as a pseudo halide ion. Therefore, the answer for this question is C N minus. Again, I will tell you definition of pseudo halide, and we can end the classes again in the next class. We will discuss with the new chapter. Pseudo halide ions are the one. Which do not contain halogens, but show the property like halide ions, and should contain the most electronegative elements. Okay, these were the few questions related to P block elements. In our this time, we have to solve this much only. So you should read first year, second year, PUC both. You will get a few questions in the objective exams. Okay, thank you.